In our segment, it's the economy. We have been speaking to several consumer dur uh, durables and non-durables FMCG companies. For the moment, uh, we are looking at another segment, uh, not usually uh, susceptible to demand ups and downs. It's more a steady demand. Cigarettes. Uh, KK Modi, President and Managing Director of Godfrey Phillips, joins us now. Uh, good morning, Mr. Modi. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, what uh, For you, the problems are more like GST. Is the industry now back to normalcy after all those disruptions, uh, GST, CES, demonetization, etc.? The industry as a whole is showing revival. The tobacco consumption, particularly cigarettes, this year is a growth about 5-6 percent. So this is a growth after a long time, it's a welcome growth and industry looks healthy. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Modi, uh, uh, that's about volume, 5 to 6 percent. What about price hikes? How many have you taken so far, if at all? And uh, are you likely to take some? How much is on the cards? According to us, uh, there is a marginal increase in prices. So this much increase is sustainable. But if there is a tax increase and the rates go up very high, in that case, there will be again a problem. Hi, right, Mr. Modi, good morning. Uh, what about uh, cigarette volume growth? How have you done in the nine months of this fiscal so far? And what's your outlook like for FY20? I think this year growth for GPI will be close to 10%. So it will be higher than the average industry growth. Okay, so 10% growth. What about FY20? Any assumptions on, on how much growth we can expect? Uh, and in terms of margin expansion, volume expansion, what are we looking at? I think much depend upon taxation, but if there is no changes in tax, then the growth may be close to 10%. Now, are you expecting any tax changes? Now there is a, no fixed time. The uh, GST council can give, change the rate any time. Okay, uh, just on another note, have you heard from the ED on any allegations of FDI violation? Uh, you know, we hear that ED investigates, is investigating Marlboro makers, uh, Philip Morris, Godfrey Phillips, uh, over FDI violation. You know, there were news reports. So I just wanted to check. Well, we are enjoying peaceful time after a long time. So we hope this will continue. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, what kind of business understandings do you have with uh, Philip Morris at the moment? Where we manufacture Marlboro, we are also 50% shareholder. Okay. So we not sharing uh, any profit on that. That is very marginal. We supply at cost okay. and a small markup okay. and that arrangement will continue. All right, let's focus on the retail stores, uh, you know, and the FMCG business that you're planning very aggressively. How many stores do you expect uh, in, will open in the next 12 to 18 months? Our objective is to go uh, hub by hub. The one hub is Delhi. There we hope to have 300 stores by next year. Okay. Do you think that after opening 300 stores, this business will deliver the kind of EBITDA and profits uh, uh, that will help you to break even from the new ones? Yes. Uh, if we have 300 stores in one hub, then it's economical. Okay. Uh, just this... Uh, okay. Uh, we'll do one thing, Ms. Uh, Modi. Thank you very much uh, for joining us with all those details about our expansion plans. Okay, uh, let's shift back to markets, but uh, equity markets doing very well. Let's check out what are the first trades in the commodity space. Good morning again, Manisha. Morning, Ladan. Thank you for that. Well, we have seen some pressure for the commodities as space as well. We have seen the U.S. dollar strengthen overnight, and that seems to be putting pressure. That is one part of it, but the crude oil prices also are under pressure because we have seen the U.S. weekly inventories surge by nearly 2.9 million barrels. Markets were anticipating a decline of 1.8, but you have seen quite a double of that increase come in for weekly inventories, and that's pulled the prices down. The U.S. exports also have declined after maintaining a growth for last six or seven weeks, and 
and, and that's been yet another reason. But you haven't seen a complete sell-off come into the markets, and that is because Russia has reported 11.3 million barrels per day of an output for the month of March, which is less by quarter million barrels as compared to the month of Feb. So that has been supportive. We anyway have been talking about on how the OPEC cuts and the involuntary cuts from some of the OPEC members clearly have been supportive prices. Uh, the fundamentals are stronger, and you have seen the money riding on that as well. So seven straight weeks now that we have seen net long positions being created when it comes to crude prices. As we are closing the quarter, we are also looking at 25 to 27 percent gains holding for both the crude varieties in the international markets there. The strength in U.S. dollar also is weighing onto the gold and silver prices, where we have seen the international prices come down by nearly quarter percent. It's a similar scenario for the Indian markets, where 38,000 has given away for silver. We are trading below 32,000 for gold as well. This uh, this sector also is though well supported because of the safe haven buying, uh, the expectation of slowdown in global growth. That is something that continues to support. But the strength in U.S. dollar at this point in time is clearly weighing onto the screen. The base metal prices have been quite choppy. The strength in U.S. dollar is one factor that's weighing here as well but you also are looking at the weak China data weak Europe data that seems to be putting pressure here and the US and China trade talks that begin in Beijing today uh, have an undertone that it is going to be quite some time maybe up till May or June before we actually see some understanding some agreement come in before between the two countries and that's led to some decline before that meeting even begins in Beijing today Trading strategies, then, when we have them from Kadia Commodities, they are putting their strategies in case of energy today. Sell call really coming in for both those products. For natural gas prices, they are looking at downside of 185. For the crude oil prices, they expect 4,080 to see the target today. Okay, thanks a lot for those strategies. Uh, so, equity markets doing pretty well, commodity markets in fine fettle. We'll take a break on that note. Up next, Let's deep dive into Congress's MIG attack. You heard it right, except it's minimum income guarantee scheme I'm referring to. Pranab Sen, the former chief statistician, will join in next. Stay tuned.